So in the previous video, we talked about how during the contraction, what exactly happens is uh, in the myofibril, the filaments will sort of move where the actin filaments and the myosin filaments slide along each other and overlap along each other, causing the entire length of the sarcomere to reduce. And as the sarcomere reduces, if this process happens throughout the entire length of the myofibril, the overall length of the muscle also decreases, which causes the muscles to contract. So that's what we know. So um, in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about something called as the sliding filament theory. The sliding filament theory attempts to explain how the myosin filaments and actin filaments move closer together. The sliding filament theory explains that the myosin head pulls the actin filaments close together, making the sarcomere distance shorter. So in a way, what I'm doing here is I'm drawing out the M line and also the myosin filaments. How do you know this is the myosin filament? Because it's thick and it also contains the myosin heads. You can see that over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out the actin filaments. And how do we know those are the actin filaments? Because they are thin and the actin filaments are supported by the Z lines. And of course, the distance between the two Z lines is the sarcomere or the sarcomere is just the band or the disc between the two Z lines. That's it. It's just the distance or the disc between the two Z lines. Just, you can define it in either ways. That's fine. Now, point is, I want you to notice something important here right now. Right off the bat, you notice that the myosin head and the actin filaments are not touching each other, at least not yet. The sliding filament theory says that for muscle contraction to happen, the myosin head and the actin filaments must first join to each other or they must bond to each other or they must form a cross link with each other. There are many ways you can define it. Either, either ways are fine. So I'm just going to say that the myosin head attaches to the actin filament first. How it attaches, don't care yet. We will talk about that later. We are simplifying this. So the first thing is, the myosin heads must attach to the actin filament, or you can also say in the exam, cross-link between the actin filament and myosin heads. So far, so good. Now, what happens then is the myosin head will tilt backwards. And when the myosin head tilts backwards, because it was attached to the actin filament, what happens? It pulls the actin filament. And as it pulls the actin filament, the entire length of the thin filament together with the Z line gets pulled together. I'm going to show it to you again. This is before they got attached, then they attached to each other, and then the pull happened. Before the pull, after the pull. Before the pull, after the pull. Well, this is fun. Okay, now, so then what happens? The, is that the end of it? No. The first myosin heads will then actually let go of the actin filament and they will start the process again and keep pulling the filament. As you can see, the thin filaments are continuing to move in this case. And as the thin filaments continue to move, what actually happens is the distance between the two Z lines become even shorter. There you go. And then now you notice that the other myosin heads can also attach to the actin filaments. Those myosin heads will then help to pull the actin filament, making it easier for contraction to happen. This is called the sliding filament theory. So the sliding filament theory, as an introduction, by the way, explains that number one, what actually happens is you have the actin filaments, the myosin heads attach to the actin filaments and pull them and tilt and pull, tilt and pull, tilt and pull, tilt and pull, tilt and pull until it causes the distance of the Z line to become shorter or the sarcomere distance to decrease. This is a generalized explanation of the sliding filament theory. This, at least, I always tell my students, if you find this topic difficult, at least for the purpose of the exam, you can't get the full marks. Let's say you are too weak in this particular topic. You must at least remember this part, okay? Because I think this part is quite straightforward. This part just says that the myosin head must attach to the actin filament. The myosin head must 
tilt backwards and pull the actin filament and as it, this process repeats over and over again, the sarcomere distance decreases. And when the sarcomere distance decreases, that is muscle contraction. This is the minimum that you have to all know when you're describing the actions of the actin and meiosis. Of course, we have to go deeper, okay? Because usually when they ask you to describe sliding filament theory, it's about six to seven marks. So we are going to talk about exactly how the process happens because there are a few questions that we have to explain earlier the myosin heads and the actin filaments were not touching each other right what causes them to bond to each other what causes the crosslink to happen what causes the myosin head to tilt backwards what causes the first myosin head to let go and reattach to the actin filaments and keep pulling it again. So we need to talk about all these processes in detail as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the sliding filament theory in detail. Okay, because we need to explain how that happens. I am going to take out just one section of the actin filament and also uh, one section of the myosin filament. So as you can see here, this is just a part that is focusing on what happens within the one actin filament and the one myosin filament because we want to see it in detail, right? As a reminder, the actin filament uh, is this thin filament that contains the actin proteins, the small black circular things. It has those orange Y-shaped structures which are called the troponin, which acts as calcium ion receptors. And it has those purple things. If, you, if you're colorblind, it's okay, but those purple things are just uh, going covering, sort of covering the actin filament. And um, and those are not the actual colors, by the way, so don't worry, you don't have to say it's purple. Um, and those uh, purple colored things which are covering the actin filaments are known as tropomyosin. And I did mention that the tropomyosin is to prevent the myosin head from attaching to the actin filament. Then we also have the myosin heads which are located on the thick myosin filament and the myosin heads face away from the M line and they also the head is also an enzyme which is ATPase. ATPase which just means they can hydrolyze or break down ATP. Okay, we've introduced all this in the previous video. Now let's get into it. So just as a reminder, sliding filament theory is what happens when the myosin head must first attach to the actin filament and it must pull the actin filament. So how does that happen? So in this case over here, what I'm just doing is I'm just simplifying the structure and I'm just zooming in even further and I'm focusing on one of the actin filament and one of the, just a small part of the myosin filament and just focusing on one of the heads. Now, right off the bat, immediately you notice that before the myosin head does anything, one ATP molecule has to be attached to the myosin head. If there is no ATP on the myosin head, this entire process will not happen. Because remember, we are talking about muscle contraction and ATP is required for muscle contraction. At the very start, one ATP molecule must be attached to the myosin head before anything begins. Okay, so what happens first? The purple color, the thick purple color part, which is covering the actin filament is known as tropomyosin. I did say that the tropomyosin is to prevent the myosin head from attaching to the actin filament. And look, are the actin filaments and the myosin head touching each other? No, they are not. There's a small little gap there, yes, but they are not directly touching each other yet. The first thing that needs to happen is calcium ions will have to bind to something called troponin. Now, Calcium ions will actually come from something called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. I'll talk about the SR or sarcoplasmic reticulum later. For now, we are just focusing on the sliding filament theory. So calcium ions have to initiate the beginning of the muscle contraction. So as the calcium ion binds to the troponin, because the troponin is the receptor, it causes the tropomyosin shape to change. So see, earlier the shape of the tropomyosin was covering the actin filament. Now the shape changes a little bit. And the, that 
change of the shape is significant because it exposes the actin filament to the myosin head as I've highlighted over there. And because the head is now exposed to the actin filament, what happens is a cross link is able to form between the myosin head and the actin filament. Or you can also say in the exam, the myosin head is now able to attach to the actin filament. Now, after they have attached to the actin filament, I think I've talked about this earlier, while ATP is still attached to the myosin head, the myosin head is now able to tilt backwards. And as it tilts backwards towards the M line, or it just moves backwards, it will also pull the actin filament because, like I said, the actin filament was attached to it. It will pull the actin filament, and this is known as the power stroke. So let's go back to this structure over here. As it pulls the actin filament, look at it, what happens? The distance between the two Z lines become shorter. So the sarcomere distance reduces. That is what's happening. The actin is now overlapping on the myosin. So let's go back to this. As you can see, the actin is now also overlapping on the myosin over here. So you see, after it pulls the actin filament, it has to kind of go back to its original position and pull it back again, like rowing a boat. So what happens is the myosin head will then hydrolyze the ATP into ADP and phosphate and it will, as it hydrolyzes the ATP into ADP and phosphate, it will detach. You can also see it's no longer attached to the actin filament, it will release the actin filament and then it releases the ADP and phosphate as well. Okay, it releases it into the sarcoplasm or the cytoplasm and that's about it. So all you just have to mention in the exam is the myosin head hydrolyzes the ATP into ADP and phosphate and releases it. This also causes the myosin head to detach from the actin filament. So that's good. That's fine. But as you can see over here right now, it's no longer touching the actin filament. And that's not good because you want it to, you know, reattach to the actin filament. So what causes it to reattach to the actin filament so that it can continue to pull the actin filament? Well, the answer is very simple. In the muscle, in the muscle fiber, we have a lot of uh, mitochondria and the mitochondria will generate ATP and the ATP as you can see here it goes towards the myosin head and reattaches to the myosin head and as it reattaches to the myosin head look at what happens to the shape of the myosin head it's able to you know stand up again and it's able to reattach to the actin filament and start the process anew new ATP attach reattaches to the myosin head allowing a new cross link with the actin filament and the process repeats over and over and over again until it reaches the maximum of the contraction or if the muscle runs out of ATP this is referred to as the sliding filament theory. So I've summarized it for you over here in this diagram. And when you're writing out your notes, uh, it will it will actually be helpful if you, um, you know, uh, write out the caption as to what happens for each of the picture. So for number one, calcium ions bind to the troponin on the actin filament. Number two, tropomyosin changes the shape and exposes the actin filament to the myosin head. Number three, the myosin head attaches to the actin filament, or you can also say cross-links happen between the myosin head and the actin filament. Process number four, the myosin filament will tilt backwards, pulling the actin filament in the process as well. And this causes the distance of the sarcomia to decrease. Process number five, the myosin head, which also acts as an enzyme, which is ATPase, will hydrolyze and release the ADP and phosphate. And this also causes the myosin head to detach from the actin filament. See, it lets go of the actin filament. And process number six, ATP reattaches to the myosin head, which causes it to also form a new cross link with the actin filament and start pulling the actin filament again. Then the process repeats itself. And as the process repeats itself over and over and over again, the distance, the actin starts to overlap more with the myosin. The thin filaments and the thick filaments are sliding along each other. That's why it's called the sliding filament theory. And that is why the sarcomere distance decreases. And of course, as the sarcomere distance decreases, the overall length of the muscle also decrease. And that is muscle contraction right there. Whew, that is a lot. But 
sometimes some students will be quite um, honest and they'll tell me, teacher, this is too difficult for me to explain. I can't memorize the whole thing. Now, if you can't memorize the whole thing, um, a cop out or a sort of easy way out, you will not be able to get the entire, if sliding filament questions come out, and if they ask you to explain sliding filament theory, usually it's about six marks. If you can't get all the six marks, it's okay. Let's try to get at least three to four marks. So the th three to four marks that you should get is as follows. At least you must remember that the calcium ions will attach to the troponin, at least mention that, and it causes the myosin head to bind to the actin filament. If you want to skip the tropomyosin, you will lose a mark there if you do not talk about it, but it's okay. So you can talk about how the calcium ion initiates the whole process, at least referring, at least a reference to the calcium ion is important. The calcium ion binds to the troponin and it causes the myosin head to directly bind to the actin filament. Okay, just mention that. You'll at least be able to get one mark over here. And then you just have to mention that the myosin head tilts backwards, pulling the actin filament. And number four, the sarcomere distance decreases. At least if you can mention this, you will not be able to get six marks, but you will at least be able to get three marks if you are lucky. Okay. But if you want the entire six marks, if you are asked to explain sliding filament theory in the exam, then you have to explain process number one to process number six as pictured over here. Okay. So let's do this again. As we can see over here, I'm drawing out the thick myosin filaments and the thin actin filaments. So what happens first? Remember, calcium ion has to bind to the troponin. And as the calcium ion binds to the troponin, what happens then is the tropomyosin changes shape, exposing the actin filament. This causes the myosin head to attach to the actin filament. Then the myosin head with ATP attached to it will pull or tilt backwards and it will pull the actin filaments as well and the distance of the sarcomere will decrease and of course the myosin head hydrolyzes ATP and releases the ADP and phosphate and it also causes it to detach from the actin filament and then the new ATP molecule comes in and the process starts again so I'm just writing it out over here there we go. So I'm just highlighting it. So look at the sarcomere. At the, at the beginning, as I'm highlighting in yellow over there at the top, the sarcomere distance was that long, right? The distance between the two Z lines. That was the distance. Uh, it was that long. But as the myosin head pulls the actin filament, look at the distance of the sarcomere. It has reduced. So please mention that in the XM2. That will give you a point. And of course, uh, this, uh, this is the entirety of the sliding filament theory okay and of course uh, some students will ask does it just stop here of course it, do it doesn't stop here because you still have those other myosin heads and those other myosin heads will also join in and pull the actin filament until the muscles cannot contract anymore there is a limit to how much your muscles can contract anyway so i hope you understand this part of the sliding filament theory